Hey guys, welcome back for Let's Play Spyro the Dragon 2, Ripto's Rage. We're now going into one of my favorite levels in the game, Zephyr. What this level is, is like a Warzone type theme. It intertwines with another level in this game, which I'll be doing next. Uh, Breeze Harbor. Only because no one else will. So, what can I say about this level here? It's an okay level. It's not one of my top favorites. My top favorites are in the next overworld. But uh, the level this level intertwines with, uh, Breeze Harbor, that is one of my favorites here in Autumn Plains. Like, it's the birds versus the blobs, I guess. It's the attack of the blobs! I, I, I will be saying that in the next video also, that little pun right there. But honestly, we don't see what they're fighting over about. Like, did one of the Brees Harbor birds come over here and take a dump or something? Like. Bird poop, but you know. Dang cannon just ain't working for me. You think you can blast that bird, soldier? Jump up here and give it a try. Or did the blobs here just see the movie The Blob? You know the the classic horror uh, monster, whatever it is, of the Blob. And uh, oh, we're gonna do that also. Nice shooting. Thank you. Or is there something I'm missing? Me, I kind of look for the story standpoints for for a lot of things there. People like to hear a good story. People like to, and here's another thing. While I'm, I guess, putting on a okay, the music just reset. While I am playing the game here, I'm trying to do a good review also. Like people like to hear other people's opinions about stuff. That's why people look up review videos for video games or just movies, or whatever else. Anything you can think of. Shoot, you can even probably have a, have a review of the color blue. Blue is my favorite color, so... Okay, that was real quick, the music just reset again. I guess it's a short soundtrack then. Yeah, okay. Review videos. Would you all want me to do reviews outside of these Let's Plays here? And if so, what would you want me to review? Like, would you want me to review video games or movies? Music? If it comes to music, I am not doing any Justin Bieber or any other type of that. I, I'm not into pop music. I'm not into rap music. I'm not into R&B. I like modern rock music or even classic rock. Some classic country is okay, but I'm I'm all rock right here. Should I'll just go ahead and give my to review right here on uh on music there. Just music in general. I'm not re referring to just a single artist or or whatever. I like rock music. One reason being, well, 24 lives. One reason being there, it has a more of an instrumental value to it. And what I mean by that is, the more usage of musical instruments like the guitar or drums or keyboard, I even seen rock bands like Within Temptation, who have had a full orchestra play, and, and it just sounds terrific. There's a link there in, in the description. For you guys to check that out there. I personally recommend it. It is it is great. 
Not to mention Sharon singing. Oh my god, it's fantastic. She's like the female Miles Kennedy, if that makes any sense right there. Imagine them working together. That would be such a great, great album right there. They both know how to hold a, hold a tone, and they just do well so doing it. Like, and I'm referring to Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge, and uh, and if you ha if you ha if you haven't heard Blackbird or Words Darker There on the Wings, Shed My Skin, you're truly mi missing out right there. For those of you who have never heard of Alter Bridge and know WWE. If you know Edge, you know Altbridge. Just that's his uh, the band who does his theme song right there. Now, why do I give so much hate on pop music and rap music and R&B? Well, for the most part, they don't make a lot of sense. Like some of it is okay, but at the same time, though. How can I put this? Like, especially with rap music, like I hear, like I'm not being racist here. I'm like, like black rap. Some of it talks about weed, sex, drugs, cr sometimes even crime, and uh, sometimes they have to just make them rhyme. Some people just don't care because about the lyrics. They just care more about the artist. They're sheep. They care more about what the what the uh, the musical artist brings, or who, or whatever big celebrity or superstar is out there. Whatever he he has to bring there, people have to be sheep about it and just follow it. Especially things on Twitter nowadays. Like, when did Twitter just become such a big deal? Grant, I do have a Twitter, but I just used it to to, uh, to post my. Uh, my videos from you know I have my YouTube connected to my Facebook. Or, uh, my name is Little Bo Peep, and I have lost my cowlicks. With these battles going on all the time, they keep running away. Can you help me get them back into my pen? Yes, I can. But back to what I was saying there before. I do have a Twitter account, but I have it connected to my YouTube. Whenever I upload a video, it'll automatically post to YouTube like Connect One uploaded a video. And then that will be posted onto my personal Facebook. I don't have a uh, Konak One Facebook yet. I may create one, but I just don't know how I could go out about posting new content or just updates for likes, comments, whatever. Now, what else can I say here? Back to, back to what I was saying about maybe. Okay, let's let's start with Edge there. WWE. Edge was my favorite performer in the ring. He was great on the mic. He, ha he has talent, great music, and like he he's truly talented. Have you see, ever seen his uh, Decade of Decadence DVD? You'll know exactly what I'm talking about right there, especially in, in that intro there, but right before the first match. He's like the boyhood dream. He has talent. And he's just so good at what he does there. He even when he was a heel, that was like truly like he drawn you in, like some people made you hate him. I liked I like the the heels there as well to an extent. And I'm like saying I like Vicky Guerrero or anything like ugh. And especially the ones when he was going out with Vicky Guerrero, like that was kind of disturbing. But they, he did his best to give you his worst, and he did such a good job at it. That's what makes him one of my favorites right there. He always knows what to bring to the table. And especially since we're in this new PG era, I can kind of look at it as a few ways of, like, pros and cons about 
him having to leave there because of possible uh, spine injury is what I think he remembered. Like he would... I'm not really sure if it was a spine injury or a shoulder injury. What light from yonder window breaks? That window up there, dummy. The professor said he was working on a way to help me get back with Juliet, but I haven't seen him in a long time. But I remember what he was saying about he wasn't feeling all that well after a, a WrestleMania. And so he went to the doctors to have himself tested. And the doctors found this one problem, and if he competed in this type of match here, which was a an Extreme Rules match, I believe. No, it was an Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And uh, if he had competed, there would have been a possibility for a severe or even career-changing injury. So, that said... Ah, oh, my, phone, my phone's ringing. Alright, I'm just gonna cut this commentary for just a moment here. Be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I just uh, split the audio... Uh, split the audio. I just uh, split the commentary in my editing program here. This is all pre-recorded game footage right here. Anyway, what was I saying before? Oh yeah, Edge. Uh... I, I basically pretty much given everything about him, and, uh... Spyro, my boy, I've got a magic bean, uh, I mean seed, for you in here somewhere. Uh, here it is. Why don't you plant it in the ground and see what grows? Aiming the seed by holding down... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, just... Anyway, I think that's all I have to say right there, uh... No, I don't. I have misplaced. I'm trying to aim right here. Anyway, uh, gosh, what, is, what else is there to talk about? I honestly have no no idea. Other than the music keeps on resetting and resetting, I I don't know if it's the, like a glitch here in this emulator here. I guess this is kind of like a little bit of fairy tale land, also. I'm just trying to create a topic here. With a little Bo Peep and Romeo and Juliet. Let's go and talk about Juliet. Juliet is a Breeze Harbor female, I guess. But when we finally get up to her, she's like. Is, is she a tran transgender or something? Or a transvestite? I really have no freaking idea. Gosh, I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> help me out, help me out. Well, since I was talking about WWE, I guess I might as well rant more on it, like... Why is WWE still PG? I originally heard it went PG because of... Uh... Miss McMahon. I said Miss McMahon, not Vince. She was running for... I believe it was Senate of Connecticut? But I think she failed, and now the WWE, I guess it's in its biggest promotion now since it's PG. It's not the same as what I what, what I was watching with growing up. Like, I started watching wrestling in 2004, just after WrestleMania 20. And here I am, about 10 years later, still watching... But at the same time, though, it's it's not what I grew up watching these past ten years. Well done, my boy. Here are two more seeds to get you the rest of the way. So and take this with you if you. Yeah, yeah. Give me the orb. 
I... Up until... Maybe... WrestleMania 26? No, I didn't. I'm trying to aim here. Maybe WrestleMania 25, 26 ish? It's kind of hard for me to say. I don't remember when the PG era started. But at the same time, though. I don't really like the PG era. The storylines are all messed up and... Shoot, next thing you know, there might be... You know, a wrestle match breakout because, oh, someone took my sandwich from the locker room fridge. Forget that mess up, WWE. Like, go back to what it was, what it truly was. Oh, and here we're at, at the transgendered bird, I guess. I really don't know about this bird here. But back to what it was. WWE, I would settle for PG-14 or even go back to the Attitude Era. 14 at the least, that's when I, that's when, what it was when I started watching. The Ruthless Aggression Era, I believe it was. But now it's the PG slash Cena Era, where Cena has to be th the mux of everything. Short where it counts there, Juliet? I don't know. But back to what I was saying, Cena. I despise his character. Like, he always has to be the center of the tension. Like, like no joke. Center. Center of attention. Like, they're, they're giving him too much as a push and they can't afford to have him injury because th this is why WWE is PG. They want to try and keep their, their superstars in the best way so they have to, I guess, do the ring in uh, wooden planks and memory foam mattresses just so they won't get hurt. Granted, this is why he's wrestling to some viewers say is fake. But I believe it's the story that really sucks us in rather than the match. Like, is that, that's what they are, our storytellers right there. And every, I, for one, love a good story. And I just totally messed that up right there. But Cena, though... God, he... He is just so horrible. Like, why is he the center of attention, though? Who decided that we should make him the new Hulk Hogan or the new Stone Cold Steve Austin? You know? Why is it like that? Is it maybe because of today's society? Or does he... Or just is he relatable to younger audiences? Now, CM Punk, he was my, f he is my favorite. He has wrestling talent, excellent on the mic, and he knows what we want. And that's what I like about this guy here. He has it all. He's like... <sighs> I guess he's like Edge. Whoa. Thanks, Byro. Here's a little something, you know, for the effort. Nice little uh, glitch right there. Free falling on top of the fence right there. There are two more cowlicks out there somewhere, but I haven't seen them in days. And I've already brought them out here in the in the world here, so all I need to do is just bring them into the pen. There's one right there, and where's the other one? Okay, over there by the chains. 
number six, and number seven. That's all the orbs for this level here. Now I just need to find and find the gems here, and I need wow, about 90 gems. Uh, well, I do know there's one area that just came back to me here. The mystery jar. Yeah, if I haven't talked about the mystery jar, I, I, I think this is actually our first working with it. The mystery jar, it, we flame it or charge it, and it teleports to another random location until you're up at the beginning of the level, then you have to go back through the level just to get to where you were before. And there's the beginning of the level right there. Alright, how many do I have now? 42, 37, and... So I still have a good amount of gems to get there. Lead the way, Sparks. Yeah, if you hold down the L2, R2, R1, and L1 buttons, as in Spiral 2 here, Sparks will point to a to the location of the nearest gems, which was something that was offered here, which would you would have to later unlock in Spiral 3. And at the same time, oh, I almost forgot about this area down here. Is that... Is that all of them? How many do I... Oh, there's some up top there. by the exit. There's still some... Okay, there's 20 gems, so I'm still missing some. And since I've pretty much gone through the level twice already, the only other place that I, that I haven't searched yet is the area with the Super Flame power-up, so it, it gotta be there. Alright, I'm gonna cut over to the end. 400-400. Here we go. Talisman to you if you got through the breeze builder defenses. Good job, soldier. Thank you, I guess. Zephyr Talisman, which is a ruby bomb. Da 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 da! Zephyr complete. Now, if only that would work for Wile E. Coyote in the Looney Tunes. The original Looney Tunes. That would be something right there. Okay. So, in the next time, you'll see me enter Breeze Harbor. I'll see you guys then.